Florida State fans should be excited about Luke Cromahawk. I just went to see him this past Friday night, and I'm going to tell you why he's so good. You are Locked On Seminoles, your daily podcast on the Florida State Seminoles, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another episode of Locked On Seminoles. Back off the road and back at home. I am Brian Smith, your host of this show, and I thank you very much to all the everydayers and everybody that makes this a great show. You can find us wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Odyssey, wherever it may be. And you can also find us on YouTube, free, wherever you go. Part of the Locked On Network, your team every day. Today's episode is going to be about Luke Cromahawk. The 2024 quarterback commitment for the Knowles plays at Benedictine up in Savannah, Georgia. Had a chance to go watch him play this past Friday. I'd seen him numerous times on film and in seven on seven and even at the Elite 11. But I'd never seen him in pads and it's always different when somebody's trying to tackle you. So I go check him out and I had a lot of different things that I wrote down. I had some video that I posted. You can find some of it on my Twitter handle at Locked on Seminoles, etc., But more importantly, this is what Florida State fans need to know before I get into the overall theme of the show. They got a great kid coming to Tallahassee. Really good dude, good family, and the whole program itself. Quite honestly, they do a really good job of making everybody feel welcome, media included. Uh, There's a lot of of people around the program that deserve a lot of credit, Uh, tailgating and everything. I had had a great time. So uh, Florida State's quarterback coach was there to watch him, and there's, there's a lot of fun to be there. So... Uh, The show's going to start. We're going to do kind of an overview of Luke. We're going to talk about some comparisons just for fun in segment two. Some of the guys that like little bits and pieces of this player and this player and this player to kind of make it. There is no one specific guy that I would compare. I'll go ahead and tell you that now from Florida State's history, but there are different players that I would use as comparisons. Finally, we're going to talk a little bit about the quarterback history at Florida State and a couple of players that I really liked as I was growing up and some of the things that I remember about those games. So, With that, uh, please note that this is the first day back off the road, and I'm still half punch drunk from a 10-hour drive from North Carolina. So if I sound a little off or something, my apologies. But uh, it is a long drive from the state of North Carolina to south of Orlando. (laughs) It's really long. But uh, anyway, FanDuel is our official partner. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now. New customers can bet $5.00 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com forward slash locked on to get started. Okay, now a few things about him. I knew a lot about Luke. I know him well. He didn't even say anything when I was standing on the field talking to a few people. When he came out, he walked by me, and I you know, didn't even pay much attention because I'm just so used to seeing him. But with that, again, never seen him in pads. So the way he throws, did he do anything different warming up? I'm standing there next to him, talking to him, et cetera. He's the same kid, same personality, same warm-up routines, all the little things that I look for. Quarterback play is about idiosyncrasies for each guy. They're usually almost like baseball pitchers and whatnot, kind of superstitious, uh, have a very specific routine, maybe even something to eat. It gets pretty wacky sometimes with, with athletes in general, but while baseball players take the cake, I'll never find anything quite, quite like that. Luke, I would say, is about as consistent as it gets, especially for a younger guy, and that's a good sign. You need to have a routine, and he did. Doing long toss, movement drills, et cetera, before, went through his progressions with the team. Everything was serious. That's important. A lot of kids go through the warm-ups in a half-effort way, especially the really talented ones. And then they'll kind of turn it up, turn it down, et cetera. During, you can't do that with warm-ups. No two positions are more connected than wide receiver and quarterback in all of sport. Everything is timing and rhythm. I don't care if you had 10 guys that are five stars out there. It's timing and rhythm. Doesn't matter. Krumhawk did a nice job of staying on target and being consistent with the players that he's working with. And it showed in the game. So, Once we got into the contest, a few things. Number one, the other team's quarterback was on fire, and they tried to just drag out the game, 
slowly. And even though Benedictine got a lead as they exploded in the second quarter, early third, in the fourth quarter, there was a comeback. They were up like 19 or something like that. And the other team came back and took the lead. Now it was crunch time. And you get to see what it's like. Cause I mean, they, they just flat didn't play well for a couple possessions. Quarterback getting pressured, uh, quarterback in second and long, third and long, any of those kind of situations at any level. When I hear that, I go, uh oh. And it was no different for Luke. So when they get the ball back and have to score, they did. Sometimes it was him scrambling. Sometimes it was him hitting a, a pass right off the money on his first read, whatever it was, he adjusted. I find that to be very ironic because most high school kids don't do well under pressure. And quite frankly, they really don't do well after they've given up a lead. Their team just, I mean, the defense gave up some big plays. Uh, the receivers for the other team, that couple of kids that actually Luke played with for Team Dimes that are really good, a few college players. And they had more overall talent at the skill spots, and it, it showed. But they didn't give up, and they hit a few plays in the running game, mixed it up, and Luke was very accurate when he needed to be. He had a pass for a touchdown. I, I want to say it was early third quarter that was the money throw of the game, and I'd went up to the other team's stands to shoot down with my iPhone just to get a couple quick clips, put them on the internet. That's still the easiest way to do it. And to be really honest with you, I wasn't surprised because I'd seen it prior at Elite 11, et cetera. But it's still different shooting down and seeing how hard a kid can – like when you got pads on, you don't have the same mobility. It's just not quite the same. But the zip was there. The backside guy thought he was going to get a pick. Didn't even come close. He overshot it got underneath and it was off to the races for a touchdown. That's what arm strength can do. It cannot be taught. You can get it a little bit stronger, but Luke has a naturally strong arm and he can throw a bullet for that seam shots, hole shots, back shoulder th fades passes that certain guys got to angle it or time it just right. He can be a little bit off. Not that you suggest that and Chrome Hawk will be just fine. He's probably 6'3", 200, give or take. I, did, I forgot to ask him what his actual size is, but he's somewhere in that vicinity. And he can throw the football hard enough now in this kind of the way he moves and everything to put it in perspective. I would compare him to an athletic young pitcher. You would see like 25 years old in MLB, that kind of mobility. Gets off the mound, throws the ball after picking up a bunt, can turn and change direction quickly. He's that kind of athlete. He can run. He had a couple of plays where he ran over guys. This is a kid that can run a major power five offense in time. He's not going to play as a freshman. I'm not saying that in time. He can be the starter for the Knowles, be a multiple year starter. And I also think he can be a high level player. As always, before I get into a couple more specific words and traits, there's the most important thing with a quarterback is what happens after the evaluation, meaning yes or no, they pick up the offense consistently meaning you learn something every day. There's no way to evaluate that because it's future tense. And that's why quarterback evaluations are all but garbage beyond some of the superlatives I've given. I mean, you can't teach the arm strength. He's definitely an athlete. He's definitely a competitor. He's very level-headed, all great traits. He still has to learn once he gets to college like anybody else. And if he does, then those traits will take off. Uh, quarterback play is incredibly difficult at the college level because you have 300-pound men that want to run you over while you're trying to do something. But Here's a couple of other things that I, that I found interesting about him. And I, I kind of knew this, but I'd taken it for granted. Everybody around him likes him. The other players, the way he kind of manipulates the situation with his teammates, it's really easy for him just to communicate before the game. Uh, in the huddle, when they were watching film on the sidelines, they got a monitor going over plays as the game. Over. Everybody gets along with him. And you might take that for granted to a certain degree but you shouldn't. You really shouldn't. When people are comfortable with you, they will go out of their way for you. And usually vice versa. That's part of being a teammate. And that's part of how it works. Um, personality standpoint, he's a little bit like Charlie Ward. I would say, I don't know Charlie personally, but just demeanor and things, I would compare him to Charlie Ward just to put it in perspective for anybody that's seen or been around Charlie, pretty quiet guy, but when he needs to say something, he does leads by example. Luke is pretty much that way, uh, point blank uh, in private conversation, but otherwise he's always on point. I would say that's the best way to put it. As far as a comparison and all that, I'll get into that a little bit more in segment two, 
But the biggest thing that I would take away is he can be a pocket guy or he can, he can throw on the run. And in today's era, with what Mike Norvell and the entire Knowles offensive system is like, that's really important. So uh, before we go into segment two, um, I'm going to do a few comparisons in that segment. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the other guys. We're going to get into that in segment three, but it's going to be a combination, really. There'll be a little overlap between the two segments and it'll be fun because I, it gives me a little bit of a chance to kind of reminisce a little bit and have some fun with it because not everybody knows some of the guys I'm going to bring up. And I think it's important to bring up history. So hopefully some of you will know some of these guys, but if not, I'll get with it. Speaking of game changers, now for your game changer of the week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like the transfer portal, a big time recruit, or any other player that develops for the Knowles, Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good. Let's think of it this way. If you've ever had beer somewhere and you're at a bar or you're at a restaurant at somebody's house and you hate it, not exactly the most fun situation to be in, but these brews are a little bit different. They have a lot of different styles. You can get different ales. You can get sours. You can get IPAs, etc. They will have something for you. And the non-alcoholic beer section is what they're known for. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make, not, they make non-alcoholic beers that taste good with full flavor, and they're well-crafted, just like full-strength beer would be. Their brews are great tasting and award-winning. They beat out full-strength beers in global competitions. They brew over 50 styles of craft, non-alcoholic, IPAs, golden sours, and more. No hangovers ever. You can find Athletic Brewing Company in-store, online, and at bars around the country. It's a very popular growing brand. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you. You can probably find them online a little bit easier. I suggest that. Athleticbrewingcompany.com. Athlete, excuse me, athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use code Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's code Locked On at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. All right, segment two. This is the fun part. Um, I really like history with college football. And it's one of the things that probably gets overlooked, especially by some younger people. But look at it this way. If you didn't have a great quarterback or a great DB like Dion or whoever, as they came up through the 80s and they started having really good teams, really early 80s, then where would Florida State football be today? I wouldn't be doing this podcast and y'all wouldn't be here listening to it and or watching it. So keep that in mind. A few of my favorite players and the one guy that kind of re- that I remember when I first started watching was 86, 87, somewhere there. Brad McManus, he was a really good player, quarterback. He was a clutch guy. He got banged up one year, but he had a big game to end his career. They beat Nebraska like 31 or 34, 28, something like that in the Orange Bowl or Fiesta Bowl, one of those games. And he had like 300 and some odd yards passing his last game. This is when Florida State was on the verge of the fast break, and they started throwing the ball over the place, even though they had good running backs. That's a guy I remember. But here, Peter Tom Willis, Brad Johnson, obviously Chris Winkie, Charlie Ward, Casey Weldon is another guy. He was right around that time that McManus is there. They had some guys that could throw the football. And this history has just gone on and on and on and on. Obviously, Jameis Winston won the Heisman, won a national title. This is a great, great history of quarterbacks. Florida State has been blessed in that regard, and I think Cromahawk will help, quote-unquote, carry it on. To use a comparison and looking at some of these guys, there are three or four players that kind of come together, and I, I apologize, I don't remember which person it was, but somebody said something to me. I can't remember if they emailed me, if it was a message on YouTube, whatever it was, but shout out. Winky had something to do with some of his traits, with Chromahawk, they're, they're intertwined, and there's some truth in that. Chris could throw the ball from a couple of different angles with no problem. Very sharp guy. I've met him on the recruiting trail. He works for Georgia Tech now. And there are some similarities. Personality-wise, like, I don't think there's any doubt 
Winky, like his personality is very similar. When he talks, you listen, but he's not just blabbering away. And, and Luke's very much the same deal. Chromahawk's not going to just talk to be talking. He has a reason for it, and then and he'll spit what he has to say. On the field, the mobility for Luke is, is better than Winky. I mean, he probably a baseball kid or something, if I was to guess growing up. Um, a little bit like Charlie Ward or McManus and some other guys. Not necessarily huge. Uh, he's a little taller than Ward, who's probably around six foot. But he can run when he needs. He's not as fast as Charlie, but he can run when he needs. And most importantly, he extends plays. So to combine it with Florida State's history, you think about where they were with McManus and some of those guys early to mid, late 80s, and how it evolved. Charlie took over like full time, I believe it was 92. Once they got, ironically, to the Georgia Tech game in 92, they were down like 21 to 7, and they just started going four wide and running verts, and, and they couldn't stop it. And Bobby kept saying later on, he talked about, we just kept running it because they couldn't stop it. Well, that's, that was the beginning of the fast break, and the more mobile quarterback was wanted, but they could also use a guy like Winky with the speed they had, and, and it worked too. I think Luke can do either. If you wanted him under center, 1985 Michigan style, you could do that, but it wouldn't be a full use of his talent. I think Florida State will probably use him with a gun similar to Jordan Travis with not quite as many runs. Like Jordan's a freak running the ball. But at the same time, third and two, if you want to run a buck sweep, quarterback power, Luke will be able to do that. He'll end up being 220 plus pounds when he's completely filled out. Like he's got a lot of growing to do physically in his lower body in particular. He's built more like a hoops player, baseball player right now, but that's typical. To get to where, like Winky got a lot bigger after he got to play for Florida State too. It's, you know, you got to go through the weight program. There is no shortcut. I think you're going to see a lot of guys that find a way to get better and push each other at Florida State with the way things are trending anyway. So that'll help him. But Luke's also naturally motivated. It, it won't be a big deal. You'll see him get better each year. And by the time he's a starter, let's say his junior year, which is the normal maturation process, I expect him to be pretty much the best guy that he can be by the middle of his junior year. He'll be that guy. It won't take him four or five years. He's going to be a fast learner. So one last thing before we get into the segment three and just go deep dive on quarterback history and kind of using some comparisons with situations. This is something else I like. It's very similar. But the last thing that I want to talk about before we go into that is this. If Florida State, I mean, I have no idea who the quarterback's going to be after Jordan Travis before anybody asks, and I'm sure somebody still will on the Twitter's handle or on YouTube, on, on the Facebook page, whatever it may be, but and that's fine. If they can get kids like Luke each year coming into the program that push the pile, it'll take care of itself on who ends up starting. Now, I don't expect any freshman to learn the Florida State uh, playbook and be ready physically. He's not He's not going to be ready physically to take that pounding, and not many guys would be. But as, as long as you're constantly bringing in guys that are high level, again, these things take care of themselves. Somebody transfers, somebody steps up, somebody's banged up, another guy moves. It's just part of the part of the process. And by the way, Florida State already has 2025 with a commitment. Out of Mandarin High School in Jacksonville, Florida, Tramel Jones is committed to the Knowles, another very talented guy, and he could run as well. Uh, he was starting as a freshman at, at Mandarin, which is impressive. He could really spin it. So Florida State's uh, in pretty darn good quarterback situation moving forward, and I don't think there's going to be any problems for them doing that uh, mm -hmm. long-term and, and making things go their, go their right direction. Um, again, we're going to talk a little bit situationally, in the third segment in regards to some of the history of Florida state and things on Luke can do. And a couple of the other guys too, I can talk about Rodemaker, AJ Duff, Rock Glenn, et cetera. We can mix that in a little bit in segment three. Why not make it kind of fun? If you will, there's no reason to kind of go away from it, but uh, this last segment is going to be brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel right now, New customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app's easy to use. 
wide range of betting options, including betting on quarters, halves, uh, player yards. You can do parlays. You can do spreads, player props, over-unders. There's just about anything you can imagine. Basically, you, the person that's using the FanDuel app, gets to figure out how you want to place a bet. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Also want to give a shout out real quick. Um, Locked on's College Football Live. Don't forget about that every Friday, 11 to 1. That is a really good thing to do each and every week. It's going to be on the YouTube channel. Make sure you check it out. And if you can't catch it live for whatever reason, work, etc., it will be downloaded onto the YouTube channel as well. Check it out. It is a lot of fun. So segment three. We're going to have a little fun with this. I'm going to use a little comparison with Luke. Go stick with him just for fun. But also use some comparison with the depth chart from what I know, just based on the little, little bit I know. Again, I have no idea what Florida State's going to do next year. Quarterback, who's going to start, how the depth chart's going to be. That Since Jordan's been the quarterback for so long, it's just open-ended. I have not a clue. But they got Rodemaker, who's a redshirt junior right now. They got Duff, A.J. Duff, who's a redshirt freshman. They got Brock Glenn, who's a true freshman. And then you'll have Cromwell coming in and a couple walk-ons. Uh, I don't think I missed anybody. But how does that mix in with the history of Florida State? Well, look at it this way. I, I started off earlier in the show talking about McManus, talking about Weldon, and some of those guys from those eras, late 80s, early 90s. They all battled each other, too. Brad Johnson who ended up getting a Super Bowl ring with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, was a backup to Weldon, if I remember correctly. Sometimes it just works out differently. Brad kept grinding. He got himself into the National Football League, made a lot of money, got to play for the Bucs. Worked out pretty good. You can do that. Florida State is in a good spot, though, because like those 80s and 90s teams for Florida State, they're not in a spot where they're just behind the eight ball. They've got options. That's the most important thing. The history at Florida State is kind of repeating itself. They're reloading the depth chart through recruiting. Amen to that. If you don't reload at quarterback in recruiting, I don't care what you sign. As much as I love all the elite corners and D-linemen I can get me, can't win without quarterback play. Need one every year. Need a quality one every year. And again, it will work itself out. Is there anything that I'm concerned about based on the history of Florida State? No. Is there any one specific thing that I want from the quarterbacks on the depth chart or loop? No. They just have to be themselves. But I think they're in pretty good shape. So I want to give you a, an example. Rodemaker is a vet, probably going to throw from the pocket more often than not. He could run a little bit, but probably going to throw from the pocket. Duff, more of a natural, very consistent passer. Think California quarterback because that's what he is, but he did transfer to IMG and play. Then Brock Glenn's a kid out of the greater Memphis area. He can run a little bit. He's similar, to be honest, to Cromahawk. And I would imagine that that's kind of how they're going to treat both of them, be very similar in what they expect out of them and how they grow. I don't really know if Florida State's had a better situation recently at quarterback. Trying to think of a depth chart in the last 10 years that had this much starting especially starting next year and the answer to me would be no that's the most important thing because those mid 80s to early 90s fsu teams had multiple guys that could play and when a guy goes down you, you i mean especially a quarterback a warder have mercy if you do not have a good quarterback you're done charlie ward had to wait his turn he didn't start like he wasn't the dude until he was a senior and then fifth year senior it's just the way it is. He he went through the whole gamut, redshirted in 89, et cetera. He had to go through the whole gamut. So last point, and I'll wrap it up. Florida State is now in a situation where they have quarterback that has all the different tools in multiple classes, like Brock Glenn, when you call them, since they're the last two, I'll just use them. Height, arm, mobility, the, the opportunity to run different kinds of offenses, Mix it up, four-minute offense, fast break. They have those things in the future. Again, we have no idea who's going to be the starter, 
that's okay. That's what spring ball is for. And they'll take care of it at that point. I just do believe that Florida State will be in a much better spot now when they leave. I mean, you're losing a Heisman candidate after this year. That's not friendly in any way, shape, or form. And I'm not making light of that. Please note, I am not. Jordan Travis has earned his respect, and he gets it for me. But he's done after this year. Florida State will be much better off than most teams that lose a big-time QB. Most teams, even Florida State over the years, when they've lost a guy that was an elite player, sometimes it didn't always go well with the transition to the next quarterback. Think early 2000s. Uh, you can think back to some of those teams that five, six years ago that were close, quarterback gets injured, the next guy up's not ready. It it can go sideways in a, in a heartbeat. I'm just glad that Florida State has options and let the depth chart kind of fall where it, where it may. Um, as far as the next couple of days, going to do some interesting things. I'm trying to study on Virginia Tech. I'm probably going to watch a little film. Do something Thursday or Friday on that. Their quarterback's a big kid that can move. Uh, they beat the bejesus out of Pittsburgh uh, kind of unexpectedly. They've got one big receiver, really good player. I mean, hopefully for them, they're a pretty good team. They give Florida State a run. And quite honestly, if the Knowles screw around, that game could go into the fourth quarter. That's the nature of FBS football. They give out scholarships too. So I'm interested to see how that is. But it's going to be, ironically, a lot about quarterback play. Can Jordan keep the offense on track? And can the defense corral yet another quarterback that can run Florida State in the ACC? Seems like they're always playing against somebody that can move. But uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun because now you're going to see if Florida State's locked and loaded. You're getting ready to go through a gamut of interesting games with different kinds of QBs that can throw it around or run. And th those guys are, are going to be a challenge. So anyway, thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day. Take care.